Hello everyone, my name is Rick Pasek, a fly fish fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today we'll be tying a little nymph pattern, uh, good for the rivers as well as lakes. Um, this actually comes out of Charlie Craven's book, Tying Nymphs. And it's actually that fly that we're going to be tying, a little different version of it, but that fly. So, uh, really good book, highly recommend this book to uh, anybody that doesn't uh, doesn't have it and that uh, is into uh, tying nymphs. These, It's a great book. So. Um, so today, uh, let's just switch over to the tying cam. Today in the vise we have a Hens BL200 in a size 8. Tie these in an 8 and a 10 normally. Um, for the thread I'm going to be using some Semperfly Nano Silk in white. For the tail, a little bit of pheasant tail fibers. For the body, I'm going to be using some Hens Hard Dubbing or hair dubbing or any other uh, uh, hair. You can use a hair's mask, um, whatever you feel like. Um, for the rib in this one, I'm going to be using some Hens, um, uh, it's body material. It's just stretch floss. That's all it is, a green stretch floss. Um, normally this asks, I know in his book he asks for mono. Um, I don't have any mono around, handy. It's all downstairs. I don't want to run downstairs, so I'll be using that. Um, I might actually ch change my mind and use silver wire, um, just silver wire, um, I, and I probably will actually. Um, so there's that, and then gold bead, one eighth. Um, for the uh, uh, flashback, I'm going to be using some just one piece of lateral scale across the top. Um, for the um, uh, CDC, I'm just going to be using some sen uh, hens olive CDC. And then for the front hackle, I will be using a Hungarian partridge feather out of my skin. So, And then a little bit more of the dubbing on the front. And that is it. So, oh, and a little bit of, um, little bit of lead to, uh, just to help get this thing down even quicker. Uh, you can use a tungsten bead if you have one. Um, so, but with this, I'm just, all I'm gonna do is just put uh, three or four wraps Nice tight wraps. There, that's about it. And then where's my junky scissors? Or not my junky, but my other scissors. There. And there. And then push that right up into the right into that bead. So that's it. It's just gonna help just a little bit more extra weight there, right? So let's see if I can get that down. There we go. Wax my thread. If you're using wax thread, you don't have to do this step. If you don't want to use a, uh, a nano silk or a GSP, but so I just build a bit of a thread dam right behind it, and then go through it once or twice. That's it. Don't go crazy. Okay. So just real quick, a uh, little base layer, just so the feather has something to sit on. Put a little bit of a bump right at the back here. Now I'm going to get myself three or four, five, six, something like that. Just a, a little handful. You don't want too much, but you want to make sure you've got enough. So here, let's just see how many I got. I got about six there. Okay, so I'm going to tie that in about the length of the, the body past. So about there my bump just a loose a couple of loose ties it's a little long I'm gonna undo that just come back just a bit yeah, that's better okay and then you can even go under it and pull it back forward there just up to the up to the wire or the lead weight. It's actually lead free. This stuff this is from Semperfly. This is lead free. 0. 0.5. There. So, okay. Come back. Now, like I said, I'm going to change, change my mind. I'm going to go with actual wire um, on this one. Uh, 0. 0.2 silver. 
I was gonna go with that stretch, but I was actually thinking of doing a uh, doing one with uh, with um, uh, body rib as well. But um, typically, when I tie this or uh, anything close to this, I'll use a mono as well for a rib. So I'm just gonna come back a little bit over top of that. I want that to just stick up a bit more. There we go. So now the hard dubbing and now this all depends on what kind of color scheme you want to go for so I'm gonna go for a, a, uh, a the natural and I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of green in it. I'm gonna mix a little, little tiny bit of this uh, number 11 green this one in with the natural kind of hairs gray kind of color and to mix them together and the reason I'm doing this is because I know where the, the, the systems that I'm going to use this on and that I do use this on um, there the insects have a little bit of a, a little bit of a green hue to it right so and that's something as as you learn as you get good at uh, doing what you do um, you pay attention more to that stuff right so you just uh, oops banging all kinds of stuff here just taking a little bit more of that uh, natural and mixing it in um, yeah, you just get to know what, you know, in what areas, especially rivers. I find rivers are, are depending on, on, on the bottom and, and the colors and how clear it is and, you know, algae growth and all kinds of other stuff. I mean, it is in lakes as well, but I find rivers, the nymphs really from one stream to the next, even downstream from each other, change their color scheme. So, okay. So. I just mixed that all together is all I did there. Probably should have done that off before, but I didn't. So so now I'm just going to dub this on. Actually, no, I'm not going to dub that on. I made a mistake. mistake. Hey, we all make them. Take that off. Doesn't matter. It's all going to get covered anyway. I got to put my lateral scale on. Because this is going to be my back, right? So I'm going to make sure this is on before I dub anything. So now I'll repeat that process. Dubby dubby. So doesn't matter if it's a bit bumpy. Once you start dubbing, you can tighten it up. As soon as it gets purchased, you can start tightening up. Right, so and I do want to uh, taper this up, I want it thicker as we go. Right, so I want a definite taper to this one. Again, I'm not too, too worried if it's not super tight because I can tighten it as I go a little bit more more this style of nymph um, is absolutely deadly um, so now I'm going to lay that over top and give that a cinch down and then before I even cut that off I'm going to make sure I work that wire through all the way to the front there. In front of it. Okay. Helicopter off my wire. Cut off my lateral. Okay, and you see that I left a little bit of space there at the front. I probably could have left a tiny bit more, but not a huge deal. Quick dubbing loop. I get my dubbing spinner. And I'm going to. This is now you can either do it this way with your CDC, 
or in Charlie's book, he's got it that uh, he actually just takes the feather and ties it in and then uh, um, just polymers it. So it it's six of one and a half a dozen the other. Um, I prefer doing this, then I don't have to worry about any uh, of the um, center stem. Right, so I'll just give that a really good spin up and then I just like picking it out, making sure that those fibers are nice and exposed. And then I will just come back just a bit, give it one, stroking everything back, two, stroking everything back, three turns. Don't worry if it looks ratty. So it'll all get uh, looking good once you uh, put your hackle in. Okay, so now I just like laying this all back and just going over top of it a bit. Okay, there we go. And now I take my brush, just brush that out, make sure there's no CDC trapped. If there's any really, really long ones, pull them off. Like really long ones like that, just pull them off. I don't want to go past the uh, the body. Okay, now I'm going to take my hackle. I'm going to tie this one up, just making sure my length is going to be good. I think this is actually a little on the long side. It is, so I'm going to get a shorter one. The one I picked was a little long. That's better. That's better. Yeah, I'll use that one. Because we're only going to need like two turns of this, right? So you don't want a ton of it. Again, I just stripped off the fluff. I'm just going to expose my tip for a tie-in point. go and then I'll lay this on the side shiny side or outside facing out the, the, the colored side facing towards you now with this it all depends on how thick you want this you can make uh, you can cut off one like a strip off one side or use both I'll use both I just hope this is going to be enough to get a good at least one and a bit wraps and it will it'll be perfect actually yeah. I could have taken off a little bit of that marabou ish stuff at the bottom end and I will when I'm done here stroke all that material back again including the stem all back four or five wraps over top because you want to force this back right take your scissors cut off your stem and then I think I'm going to try to actually it blended in quite nicely so I'm not going to worry about that then I'm going to take just a tad more of that hairs dubbing mix that I made just a tiny bit just enough to get a, a cover of my tie-in area that's it and then I'll put a dab of head cement on the thread make sure I stroke back these little leggies the partridge First, there. If you got any that get trapped, and just we can burn them out after. Really pulling that in to get that sucked down. There. And then, like I said, if there's any there's little legs sticking out, you can just give them a quick little melty melt. And there she is. That's it. That is it. So, depending on how like uh, where you're fishing and, and, and what you like. Um, I'll do this uh, like in several different uh, um, uh, thicknesses, if you want to call it that. So this one's a pretty full one. Um, next time I would probably f do one with a little bit less CDC on it and I'd stop a little bit further so I can get an extra wrap of, uh, of, uh, of the partridge on it. Um, but it's good to have thick ones it's good to have thinner ones it's good you know so have a variety but that's it it's a really buggy 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 uh fly 
and uh, that, that little bit of flash there, right, here, let's see if I can focus in on that there, that little bit of flash on the back, right, it really, it's a, it's a really good attractant. And again, change up the colors, use peacock curl, use uh, darker greens, use uh, yellows, uh, it depends, it's kind of meant to be a stone fly, right, so try to, you know, use uh, um, colors that uh, that uh, represent your, your system. So again, that's uh, out of, uh, I'll just... Uh, switch back over here uh, that's out of Charlie Craven's nymphs book um, excellent excellent pattern some really cool patterns in here a lot of like check nymphs and copper johns and all kinds of stuff so uh, but his his take on them and it's an excellent book so make sure you go out and check that one out I'll uh, try to remember to put a a uh, link in the bot in the description to his uh, his book all right so hope you guys enjoyed that if you guys subscribe, have, ooh, blah, 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 have subscribed, thank you. If you have not, please consider doing so. We'll see you guys in the next Tang video. Tang lines!